Welcome to Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Islander basketball on the Islander Digital Network powered by AEP Texas and of course on KDF, a Chris Six sports production. I'm Stephen King. Tonight it's a big one for your Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders as they come into the nice contest six and seven in Southern Conference play taking on the 12 and one Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks. I said 12 and one, who was the one? It was Texas A&M Corpus Christi that knocked off the Lumberjacks in Nacogdoches. And for the Islanders, that 73-72 win back on January 8th is probably stuck in the craw of the head coach Kyle Keller as well as all of the phenomenal players at Stephen F. Austin. And in Corpus Christi making, looking to make a season sweep of it though. And just a moment ago, they introduced Peyton Smith. Uh, Peyton Smith had a career high 12 points in Nacogdoches on that night. We'll need it from him, we'll need it from Jay Sean Talton Thomas, we'll need it from Miles Smith, everybody involved. One of the interesting matchups tonight though will be the play on the inside. The Islander Bigs have been, have been pretty impressive to this point uh, over the last few games and they were good against SFA. Let's see if they can control that play on the inside tonight. It's 90s night here at the American Bank Center. So I got a lot of fans, uh, good friends at Gulf Coast Federal Credit Union, getting a bunch of beach balls out. They've given away fanny, we've given away fanny packs tonight. It's just all the cheer and dance dressed in their best 90s gear. We shall see. Starting lineups first for Stephen F. Austin. Number 14, Gavin Kensmill. Number 23, Nathan Bain. Number three, Cameron Johnson. Number two, Roddy Ware. And the top scorer, number one, Kevon Harris. The head coach is Kyle Keller, assisted by Jeremy Cox, Wade Mason, and Mitch Vanya. For Texas A&M Corpus Christi, the starting lineup includes Miles Smith, number two, the junior. Seniors, Tony Lewis and Jay Sean Talton Thomas. Tony Lewis at 6'11", 265. Jay Sean Talton Thomas does a little bit of everything. Plays inside, plays outside, plays wherever it's necessary. Also in the starting line, Peyton Smith, as we mentioned just moments ago. Jordan Hairston. Jordan Hairston, uh, number one, the guard for Texas A&M Corpus Christi, the freshman who's had big-time assignments. There's a question mark going on right now about, uh, there, uh, about I believe, Jay Sean Talton Thomas. He had a gray undershirt on, and I think for some reason they're having to make an adjustment for Jay Sean situation. They're gonna try and put him in a, in a, he cannot wear the gray apparently with the white uniform. So that is the delay in our start as he is having to put on a different, if he's gonna put on an undershirt, he'll put on a different undershirt momentarily, but the gray, uh, uh, according to NCAA rules, has to be white to match that home uniform. He strips down from the gray and he's back on the floor. Jay Sean Talton Thomas ready to go. Islanders in their home whites. Stephen F. Austin in their road purple. Are getting things underway. Ken's Mill, Tony Lewis to jump center. Is stepped and controlled by Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Miles Smith with the basketball. Defended by Ware. High screen. Miles Smith finds Jay, uh, excuse me, Jordan Hairston. Hairston. They're looking inside for Tony. Not available yet. One thing about Stephen F. Austin, they are really excellent at, at lockup defense. Trying to throw it through Jordan Harrison with a turnover to Ware. Ware flying from behind, trying to get the block with Jay Sean Taunton Thomas. Ware able to get the lay-in. So the first two of the night belonging to Stephen F. Austin off of the turnover of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. 2-0 the count. It is Miles Smith. Oh, he had it taken away as well. Ware lost it. It's on the floor. Loose ball. SFA comes up with it. Ware gambling that Miles Smith was going to cut back to his left, and he guessed absolutely correct. Johnson cross court deflected by Bain. It was supposed to go cross court to Ware. Bain did not realize that. Ball picked up by Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Quickly, Miles Smith with it. Jordan Harrison deep. Harris has got that assignment. Now in deep to Tony Lewis. He's going to skip it out to Peyton Smith. 
over across Jordan Hairston. He's open for three. Deep three. Count it. 3-2 Islanders. The little ball fake on the screen on the pass from Peyton Smith freed up some space as Kevon Harris bought that fake. Kensmill out to Bain. Kensmill skip across. Cameron Johnson can't get free into Bain. Out with it. Johnson won't go. Nice rebound on the defensive side from Tony Lewis. Islanders lead 3-2. Just getting underway. 18-12 remaining here in the first half. Jay Sean Talton Thomas left corner. And of Corpus Christi trying to kind of figure this SFA defense. They jump, they anticipate, they steal a lot of basketballs. They're exceptional on the defensive side of the floor. Tony Lewis did he, lost it on the handle, had a chance on the catch. And somehow, Kevon Harris gets it to fall as he goes to the lane. The reach by Jay Sean Talton Thomas, 4 3 SFA. First foul on Jay Sean. First foul of the game on either squad. So it'll be Harris, who is a big physical six foot five specimen, was able to muscle his way up, taking the contact. There's a question mark about officials talking to Press Row. Real quick, want to thank HEB, the Country Inn and Suites in Fairfield Inn and Suites at Moore Plaza, Evans Glass Service, Chris Six Communications, The Waves Resort, Dave and Buster's Network Cabling Services, and AEP Texas, the proud sponsors of the Islanders on the Islanders Digital Network, powered by AEP Texas. And, of course, that carries over here to our tremendous partners here at Chris Six Communications. Harris, second for, uh, is lone free throw, is good, up to 5-3. Only points for the Islanders coming from Jordan Harrison. The three ball a bit earlier. Harris just shading. They want to look inside. They get it inside. Tony Lewis against Kinsmill. Trying to go up and through. Tony Lewis battles his way. Gets the finish. They expect the double down. But Tony did a nice job going away from the second defender. Where? Gives it up to Bain. Monitors tied at five with SFA, and there's going to be a foul on Miles Smith as he was in tight on Harris. Harris with that little duck through took advantage of Miles Smith's arms being forward. Shot clock reset to 20. 5-5 five, five the count, as we mentioned. 17-18 remaining here at the American Bank Center. Corpus Christi Athletic Club Court, the Islanders and the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks coming your way. Johnson to inbound. Coming back to the basketball, Kinsmill. Kensmill on the top, looking for someone open. Johnson picks up his dribble. They'll get it back to Harris now. Kensmill, he fought, loses his balance. I took, when Seth Engelkim joined us, he said it's one of those things like you're pulling the chair out from underneath him. He's expecting the contact. It's not there, and you ultimately stumble. And Kensmill's going to check out as they'll come on with Charlie Daniels. Daniels, a six foot nine junior out of Jacksonville, Florida. Still, even at five. Lob feed, Tony Lewis into the post. And he'll go to the free throw line. Great look, finding Tony. Tony's been exceptional on the offensive end. He's been dealing with foul trouble over the last couple of games. Right now, he's establishing himself in the low post, and he's got four looking for five. Great look on the inside. Lewis, that one you see spun out. Lewis came in shooting 73% on the season from the line. Was up over 80 for a bit. Daniels trying to back in. No good. Bain can't get it. Daniels with another rebound. So offensive rebounds, two for SFA on that series. Led to the bucket, and they lead. Excuse me, now they are tied with the Islanders at seven. 16-25 remaining first half action. Harrison defended by Kevon Harris. Harris at six foot five against the much smaller. Jay Sean Talton Thomas was blocked on the top. Out to Harris. It's going to go out of play. So the Islanders were a bit fortunate after Jay Sean was blocked on the shot attempt. SFA with the turnover giving him the ball back. David Cacklerees will come on for Roddy Ware. 
for SFA. Cackeries. Strong three-point shooter. Harris, they get it in deep to Tony Lewis. Here comes the jump double. It's taken away. It was, it was deflected as it was looking for Jordan Harrison. Cackleries will get the finish as they were able to get it through the arms of Peyton Smith. 9-7 the score. SFA taking advantage of Islander turnovers, converting them into points. They lead by two, as we mentioned. 15-35 remaining. Jay Sean Talton Thomas. A little casual with the basketball. Did he get the timeout? They got the foul, actually. Cackle Reeves will be called for the personal. I believe that is the case. Or did they give it the foul, or did they call? It is going to be a foul on Cackle Reeves, so it'll be the Islanders basketball when we come back. They trail 9-7 with 15-27 remaining here in the first half. From the American Bank Center in Corpus Christi, Texas, you're listening to Islander basketball on the Islander Digital Network powered by AP Texas and on KDF 47. Welcome back to Islander Basketball once again on KDF 47 and, of course, on the Islanders Digital Network powered by AEP Texas. Uh, Islander Men's Basketball will be back this weekend at the, at the American Bank Center as they participate in the Southern Conference doubleheader against the Abilene Christian Wildcats. The Islander women will take the court at 1 p.m., followed by the men at 3.30 that afternoon. Contact the Islander Ticket Office at 361-825-BALL. That's 361-825-2255. And you can also check out the action on the video broadcast of the Islanders Digital Network, presented by AP Texas. And once again, the doubleheader will be aired on KDF 47. Again, another Chris Six Sports production. 9-7 SFA. Elijah Schmidt checked in during the break. In for Tony Lewis in the low post. Jay Sean Talton Thomas did get a white T-shirt, which is a good thing. Miles Smith kind of getting wrangled a bit. Down to eight. Quick swing to Peyton Smith. Peyton back out. Jay Sean deep three. Off left. Handled by Cacklerees. Honitors are getting worked deep into the clock. Daniels on top. Quick swing left side into the game for the first time. Up, no good. Rebound, Peyton Smith. Nice job. In the low post, Peyton Smith picking up a big defensive rebound. Odist Walker, as I mentioned, in for the first time for Stephen F. Austin, defending Miles Smith. And he's going to be tripped up. Jordan Hairston going baseline, was looking to hook it to the corner, but got caught with a trip. 14.36 in the clock. The foul is going to be on Harris. Kevon Harris picks up his first. Harris, the team leader in minutes, points. He is the team leader in turnovers, but he has the ball the majority of the time. Harris, number three in the conference in points per game at 18 points per contest. They got to get it to the corner. They finally get it to him. It's tipped out of bounds. So for AM Corpus Christi, got to be a little bit better on the execution. Harrison sends it across. Miles Smith. Oh, Peyton Smith never saw it. Peyton Smith was already going to the other side of the floor and never saw the basketball carry him in his direction. That would have been an easy rebound. But it was his assignment. Miles Smith hit the deck. There are 
not giving him the benefit of the call on that three-point shot. Cackleries up top. Peyton Smith on that assignment. Into the hands. Walker, Walker. And he's going to be called oh, an offensive foul on Daniels. Nolan Bertain going to come off. Come on the court, excuse me. I believe for Jordan Hairston. Bain's going to check out. Daniels checks out. Ken's Mills will return. So Ken's Mills, Walker, Johnson, Solomon, on, I believe, on for the first time. Calvin Solomon, as well as Kakaris for the Islanders. Iggy Hunt is also checked in for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Good screen. Peyton Smith now looking. Can't get it on Ken's Mill. Nicely takes it away. And, and uh, another turnover for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. That time off the side of the foot as he was trying to go baseline. Looking for the basketball in deep. Kick out Johnson. Johnson, he loses it on the ground. Loose ball. Peyton Smith just takes it away. He's got racers coming from behind, but he's going to go all the way. And he'll go to the free throw line. Nope, they're going to call the goaltending. Said it hit the backboard first. So goaltending is a call. He had three defenders in pursuit, but he had made his mind up. He was going to the rim. 9-9 nine, nine the count. Javay Lampkins will come on for Peyton Smith. Upset with his turnover previously, but then comes back with a steal of his own and going the distance. 13-31 on the clock. Cackery's over the timeline. Javay Lampkins has come on for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. On for Miles, excuse me, on for Peyton Smith. Cackery's beyond the arc. Wants to go baseline. And he's going to be out of bounds. So the turnover against SFA. Roddy Ware back on. He'll come on for Walker and Harris after his brief, his brief rest. We'll come back for Cackleries. Thirteen, thirteen, the score. Quick whip to the corner. Iggy, kind of caught there. Waits. Coming all the way back is Lampkins. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Lampkins gets it to Miles Smith. Seven seconds on the shot clock. High screen. Ware trying to take away his right hand. Blocked. And I'll give, I'll give Ware credit right there. He was able to get the full extension to get a piece of the basketball. Getting too deep into the shot clock, but that's what Stephen F. Austin does. They defend so vigorously. Honors. Kinsmill takes the high position at top. On the handoff to Harris. Harris looks in deep for Kinsmill. Iggy Hunt. Oh, Iggy Hunt altered the first shot, but the man on the backside. Number 13, Calvin Solomon with the follow. 11 9, Bertain with the basketball. Lampkins, little up fake, tries to free himself, can't get it. We'll go to Iggy. Iggy picks up a dribble, gives it up to Bertain. Quick lockup defense. They lob feed, and it's going to be thrown away as is the overplay from Stephen F. Austin causing problems. And a &M, truthfully, with the turnovers that we've seen to this point, AM Corpus Christi very fortunate to trail by only two points. 11 9 the count, 11 57 remaining. Islander basketball on the Islander Digital Network, powered by AP Texas, and on KDF 47 and Chris 6. Production. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Islander Basketball. Turnovers have been the issue today for both teams. The Islanders with seven turnovers compared to Stephen F. Austin, six points off of turnovers, nine for the Lumberjacks, seven for Anim Corpus Christi. Not exactly well played in that regard, but it is a tight ball game. Nine, uh, 11 to nine the score. The Islanders shooting 50% from the floor, four of eight. 50% from the floor, five of 10, Stephen F. Austin. The lone three-point shot of the game to fall. Jordan Hairston for Texas A&M Corpus. The Islanders are one of three. Four team fouls called against Stephen F. Austin to this point. Islanders with only two. Two fouls for Charlie Daniels. The only one with, with any issue to this point. Kinsmills returns along with Solomon, Ware, Johnson, and Harris. John Como, the normal starting guard, one of the top assist men in the country, excuse me, in the conference for Stephen F. Austin. Unavailable tonight due to an ankle injury. Ware with the basketball, skips it across to Harris. Harris thought about the shot. Bertain got there quickly enough. Ware, one dribble, left side, jumper up. No good, long tip out. Ware with it, they'll reset the shot clock to 20. And they're going to they're gonna stop play because the shot clock was set to 30, and they'll take care of that right now. Again, it was not a change of possession. Johnson will inbound once again. They're gonna, they want to address the floor. Uh, Kensmill's asking for the sweeper to come out. It's where he slid just a moment ago, and so they'll make the uh, – uh, they'll, they'll put in the maintenance. That's what we're getting at here. Thank you again, AEP Texas, presenting sponsor of the Islanders Digital Network. HEB, better year starts here. Chris Six Communications, more breaking news, more team coverage, more resources. Evans Glass Service, where they specialize in service. The Waves Resort, your all-in-one entertainment destination. Dave and Buster's, half-price games every Wednesday, half the price, all the fun. The Fairfield Linden Suites, the Country Linden Suites, in the heart of the Corpus Christi Shopping District, and network cabling services connecting the communications of tomorrow. SFA with the basketball, leading 11-9. 11-25 on the clock. Harris in the lane, kicks out, deflected. Miles Smith got the hands on it, goes into the baseline seats. Shot clock at 11. Kyle Keller making calls on the inbound play. It'll be Ware to inbound near the corner. Trying to free Johnson. They want to go to Kinsmills. He's not there, but they get the switch, so Solomon can't get it to fall. Loose ball. Iggy Hunt comes up with it. So Tony Lewis, who's checked back into the ball game, disrupting things in the lane. Bertain gives it off to Miles Smith. Miles defended by Ware. It's been pretty challenging for Miles thus far because Ware has been doing an excellent job. That jump defense, pretty tough. Lampkins, step back, deep three. Count it, that's what he does. Jave Lampkins buries the deep triple, 12-11 the score. Ware with the basketball. Lob feed, Kensmills. And Iggy Hunt was there late. They were calling for him from the bench, but he just got there a half second late. Kensmills with the left hand got the finish. Iggy had the three blocks in the last contest against McNeese. Some with authority. Hunt will wait, take it to the far side, gets it back up into the hands of Miles Smith. High screen, Tony Lewis on him, he's having to get away. Miles Smith. Blocked again. This time, Kensmills got a piece of him, though. So, Miles Smith, quick off the ground. Kensmills a hair late. Did get some basketball, but got the hand as well. 13-12, SFA by one. First foul on Gavin Kens Kensmill. 10-14 remaining. A lot of substitutions about to take place, as we'll have three Islanders, three Lumberjacks looking to come on. Tied at 13. Javay Lampkins checks out. Tony Lewis checks out. On the floor, Jay Sean Talton Tompkins returning, as well as Perry Francois seeing action for the first time. There's four. You have four players on the floor. <laughs> Just notice that they, that there was an extra substitution for the Islanders, and he's going to come on. Everybody, now he, someone says there it is. They're going to get it where they need it. And this is where it stays. Stay, 
14-13, Islanders by one. Tackle Reese sends it over to Ware. Bain on the top, sends it to Harris. Jay Sean Talton Thomas now with that assignment. Ware looks in deep to Bain. Bain skips, just throws it right to Jordan Hairston. Hairston with a, with a one point on in the lead with the basketball, looks for Tony Lewis. And they will guard him on the three point line. And right now on the low post, Perry Francois playing big. Daniels foul trying to get over the top. It'll be Lewis to inbound. No, excuse me, he's heading to the quarter. Kinsmill will come on. Daniels with his personal. I believe that's his third. Knocked away by Ware, going the distance. Flushed it through again. They're gonna jump into every passing lane. You gotta assume it's gotta be clean or look for some backdoor cuts. Again, jumping into the passing lane. Jay Sean, kick out to Tony Lewis, to Hairston. Hairston in the lane, floater, count it. Oh, they're gonna wave it off. Nathan Bain, they're gonna say got there in time, drew the charge. 15-14, good drive, good finish, but Bain able to help from the offside. Bain will inbound. Cackleries will walk it up. We played over 10 minutes of this contest. 9-10 remaining here in the half. Cackleries looking for Bain on the top. Bain wants to loop it in. Can't get it there yet. Harris will pull the trigger. That's way off right. And, and it's going to be Bertain who picked up the loose ball. Quick swing. Tony Lewis thought about it. But Kinsmill, he knows he has to get out on Tony Lewis on the three-point line. Tony, four of eight from three this season, more than capable. Perry Francois stepping through, right hand finish. Will it go? Nope. Tony Lewis fighting for it. It's going to go off of Tony Lewis. Stephen F. Basketball. 15 14 the score. It remains, again, just a battle for sure. AM Corpus Christi on the season, holding teams to 66.9 points per game. That's second in the Southland Conference. 67.6 points per game. Stephen F. Austin, they hold teams too. That's number three in the conference. Jay Sean Talton Thomas slips to the ground, and Tony Lewis did a nice job on the help side, looking in deep for Ken's Mills. Ken's Mills, nice spin to the middle. Three points, Stephen F. Austin lead. I believe that is the largest lead of the game for Stephen F. Austin. He's been tight the whole way. Miles Smith, Perryton Smith looking to come in. Loose ball. Who's got it? Someone's got to get on that ball, and it's going to be a foul on Jay Sean, which actually stopped the transition layup. So probably a good foul for Jay Sean. His second, though, not a good thing. 17-14 the score, 7-52. It's been a bit sloppy without a doubt, but it is tight. 17-14 the score. Lumberjacks over your Islanders. More to come on KDF 47. And, of course, on the Islander Digital Network powered by AP Texas. Stay with us. More coming your way. Got a great promotion from our game sponsor, Gulf Coast, Communi uh, Gulf Coast Federal Credit Union, on the floor right now. 
trying to give away a thousand bucks. I think our student's gonna fall just short. Uh, the game here though, 17-14. Stephen F. Austin leading your Islanders. Oh, that was awful nice. She still got money, that's wonderful. They didn't offer it to me, darn it. Looking at some of the numbers. a and Corpus Christi struggling on the boards a bit. Only six rebounds to this point, only one offensive board for Texas a and Corpus Christi. Second chance points, Stephen of Austin only with a 4-2 advantage thus far. Islanders, as we mentioned, still shooting well, 45.5%, 50% for Stephen F. Austin. They're 8 of 16, Islanders 5 of 11. A couple threes from Adam Corpus Christi, keeping it close. Jave Lampkins, as well as Jordan Hairston, loop over to Ware. Ware on the screen. They look in deep, and trying to come over to help was Jalen White. Nice screen and roll for Stephen F. Austin. They get the bucket. They lead 5, 19, 14, Kensmo with the finish. Jalen White, freshman for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Missed a number of games due to a hand injury. Catch and shoot, Jordan Hairston three, in, out, in. Jordan Hairston knocks it down, back to two, 19-17. Second three of the night for Jordan Hairston. And there's gonna be a foul on Perry Francois battling with Kinsmo in the lane. That is gonna be the fourth, excuse me, now fifth team foul against the Islanders. First foul on Perry. Bain on the end, uh, is trying to set the screen. They're looking for Kinsmill, not there. Harris, and he's going to be, they called for the travel. Jalen White had a hand on the basketball. Didn't tie him up, but forced the turnover. Jay Sean Talton Thomas, Elijah Schmidt to come on. Francois will check out as well as White. Down to 7-10 remaining. Out of the women's basketball on the road tonight in Nacogdoches. The top two teams in the Southland Conference tied for first. Get you some updates on that as the game progresses. Harrison, quick swing to Jayshon. Mid-range jumper as he steps up nicely. Will it go? No. Loose ball. It goes off of Stephen F. Austin. Bain, a and Corpus Christi will have it on the baseline with 6.54 remaining. Again, this, is just, this, is, this is just two teams scratching and clawing right now. Trying to free up Miles Smith, they do. Well towards the half court, Miles caught in traffic, lose the ball. And they almost do, and they do, as does Stephen F. Austin. Stephen F. Austin turns it back over, so a Corpus Christi gets a bit of a break. Kinsmill trying to find Harris, just threw it behind him. And before Harris could secure it, the ball did hit the sideline. Oh. Jason Dalton Thomas having a conversation with Coach Willis Wilson, uh, and the official was trying to bring him about three feet closer to half court so he could inbound the basketball. Willis Wilson trying to definitely get attention of his team. Smith gives it up to Jay Sean, defended by Bain. Jay Sean, and it's going to be three point chance. Jay Sean Dalton Thomas drawing the foul off of Kensmill. That's number two on Gavin Kensmill. Jalen White. We're going to see some offensive defensive switching already with Jay Sean picking up two fouls here in the first half. White's going to be looking to check in if Jay Sean knocks down the free throw. Tied at 19. Tight one here at the American Bank Center. So Thomas. Talton Thomas, 71% on the season. Actually 72%, 65% in conference, only 15 to 23. He knocks that one down, and he'll head over. 20 to 19, Islanders up one. Cacklerees, defended by Harrison. Nice little crossover to get free for a moment. Harris on the top, high screen, Solomon goes away. Harris on the skip, looked like he traveled, but then no whistle. Johnson's going to pull the trigger on the jumper. Won't go. Rebound, Peyton Smith. The guard flying in once again. Peyton wisely bides his time. Jalen White had it taken away. Harris lays it in. 21 20.
Smith with the basketball. Cackleries. Let them lose him for a moment. Hairston, who's got a couple threes. Defended tightly by Harris. A preseason first team all conference performer. Hairston. Kicked it out. Peyton Smith, deep three. Off the mark. Long board Bain. Swiped. Cackleries. Looking for Harris. And he's going to get the flush as Peyton Smith gambled. Twenty three twenty SFA. Back to the three point margin. Miles Smith goes all the way to the rack. Pass Cackleries gets the finish. Back to one. Solomon trying to turn the corner. Skips deflected. Now back into the hands. Three point bucket up. Eli Smith can't come up with it. Jordan Hairston tries. He's on it. And he wants a timeout. Does he get it? No, they're going to call the foul on, on uh, Stephen F. Austin. Once again, going up over the back of Jordan Hairston on the floor, which will lead to free throws because the Islanders are in the bonus. Hairston went after that basketball. I don't think he realized how close the Lumberjacks were. Instead of securing it with the two hands, went after it with one. Fortunate for the Islanders. Walker's going to come on. He'll come on for Cackleries and coming on for Solomon. That is going to be Samaja Hart, number zero. Javay Lampkin's looking to come on as well. He'll, he's going to be coming on for the shooter. Hairston. Knocks down the first, tied at 23. Hairston. 82% in the season, 91% in conference play. 21 to 23. Lampkin, biding his time, hit a huge three, a step back three just moments ago when he was on the floor. Second free throw up and good as well. Up one, 442 remaining, 24 23, a tight contest here at the American Bank Center. Southland Conference play. We'll get some updates on the Southland. At halftime as well, we have a halftime interview coming up. Our good friend Jeremy Garza from Gulf Coast. Can't get the finish. Loose ball. Who's got it? Miles Smith waits. Honors up one with an opportunity to build. White with it. All the way with the left. All the way through. Gets to the hole as he gets by. Number zero, Hart. Honors up three, 26-23. That's their largest lead of the game. Bain to the right wing. Up top to Johnson. Johnson picks up a dribble. Challenged. Bain over the top over Miles Smith. He'll go to the free throw line. 4.03 on the clock. Good box out and good defense forcing the difficult shot by the Islanders. The Islanders defense, excuse me, forcing the difficult shot by SFA leading to this opportunity. Kevon Harris, well, Coach Keller can't keep him on the bench long. They're bringing him back. 26-23 the score. Johnson will check out. For Harris. Harris thus far. With, I believe, seven points for SFA. Miles Smith, he, he has got a routine to his free throw shooting. He will sit there. He will bide his time. He will take a breath. He will bend those knees. And then he'll do the exact thing all over again. It is a pre-shot routine that he duplicates every single time. 27-23 Islanders. Misses this one, though, as it goes off the front iron. Four-point Islander advantage. Ware with the basketball. Peyton Smith in pursuit. Harris on the drop feed. Nice job. Oh, my goodness, the loose ball as the Islanders, Islanders had the basketball, stopped the shot. Eli Smith with great defense. Coming back to the ball is White, cross court. Peyton Smith on the back door feed. He tries to go, and he stepped out of bounds. We're having some issues with the floor. That's three separate spots I've seen where we've had players fall. He did tap his head on the ground. 
They will address that here in a moment, but there is a stoppage on the floor. 3.31 on the clock. Islanders lead 27-25 over the Lumberjacks. Stay with us more to come. Islander basketball on the Islander Digital Network, powered by AP Texas, and on KDF 47, a Chris Six production. Twenty-seven, twenty-five. the score, Islanders by two. Going to be very intriguing checking out the Southland Conference scoreboard a bit late. A bit later in our halftime. Also, Islander women's basketball, as we mentioned. They're on the court tonight. And in that contest, it's a tight one, but it's Stephen F. Austin with five minutes remaining, leading that one 37-31. We'll keep that one up to speed as well. Thus far, Kevon Harris leads Stephen of Austin with seven points, six for Gavin, uh, Gavin Kensmo. Brandon Corpus Christi, eight points for Jordan Hairston, five, Miles Smith. Little balance as the Islanders have seven players on the board. Seven for Stephen F. Austin as well. After the turnover. Where will inbound, where will come up the floor? Islanders are pressing. Deflected by White, but Bain able to come up with it. Where loose ball on the ground, blocked. Who's they gonna say? Oh, they're gonna say on Miles Smith. Who was the foul on? I'm, I'm very intrigued. They're gonna say it is on Miles Smith. And for him, that's number two with 320 remaining. It is the sixth team foul against the Islanders, so the next foul will put them in the bonus. The next foul against Stephen F. Austin will put them, will put the Islanders on the line for the double bonus. So a Corpus Christi having to stay aggressive. Put Stephen F. Austin in a difficult position where uh, Harris knocks down the free throw. Tony Lewis coming on. He'll come on for Elijah Schmidt. Islanders still up one. Harris trying to tie from the line. That was just some nice interior passing by Stephen F. Austin in traffic. Jay Sean Talton Thomas is going to come on for Jalen White. Peyton Smith, Tony Lewis, Miles Smith, Jay Sean Talton Thomas, Javay Lampkins off Randy Corpus Christi. Harris hits them both. Hart, Harris, Bain, Ware, and Walker for SFA. 313 remaining. To the wing. Almost, almost a turnover. Miles Smith tracking ball up down in the corner. Fortunately. Trying to break down uh, Harris. Kick out. Three ball. Won't go. Tony Lewis with the rebound. Up and under and a three-point tip. Tony Lewis big on the offensive boards. Tony going to the opposite side of the rim, looking for a little protection. Got it. 29-27 with a chance to push it back to three. The first foul on Hart. Elijah Schmidt's going to come on for Miles Smith, giving him the breather. Jay Sean Talton Thomas checks out as, as uh, White comes back on. So you're going to see some offensive defenses switching involving both Talton Thomas and Miles Smith at this point, each with two fouls. Misses the mark, unfortunately. 29-27 for Tony. I think that's a couple misses tonight. Out of bounds. 
SFA bobbles the basketball right in front of the Islander bench and right in front of us here at Press Row. Show, show, show. Jay Sean Talton, Thomas Miles Smith. Again, offensive, defensive switching as expected. Islanders remain up two and trying to hold on to their advantage as we head towards halftime. Miles Smith biding his time where playing a little bit further off him. Trying to take away his penetration. Loose ball back to Miles Smith. Three ball. Will it go? No. Tipped out. And there's going to be a foul on Tony Lewis, they say. Tony Lewis trying going over the top. For Tony, that's going to be his first, but it is the seventh team foul. Free throws coming up. Was it against Harris? Was Harris the man in the lane? They're saying, yes, it was. Kevon Harris will go to the free throw line. Trying to tie it from the line. This game has had not a, 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 a whole lot of flow to it, a lot of stoppages. Some turnovers, some fouls along the way. But it has remained extremely tight. I think Stephen F. Austin, largest lead was four. No, actually five for Aiden's Corpus Christi. It has been four. But right now, that's all for not as we are tied at 29. Where? Gets it across. Well, he kind of forced the pass across to Smith. Back to Miles. Excuse me, Jay Fon, Jay Shaw, uh, Jave. Nice. Uh, I like what he did. That should be a foul, and it'll be two shots coming up for Jave Lampkins. As everybody was anticipating them just working through their weave, Jave just took off to the rim and got him off balance. So they'll get the substitutions here in a moment. As Lampkins will shoot, too. That was. The second, Perry Francois, along with Schmidt and White, looking to come on. Lampkins, nicely done. Hits the first. Jave Lampkins on the season, 80%. Had to shot many. He's more of a three-point shooter, so getting him on the drive kind of caught everybody off guard. Took the call. He's only made, he had made four of five before this. Again, primarily hovers around that three-point line. Lampkins hits two, though, beautifully. Substitutions were made. Lampkins stays on with White, Francois, Schmidt, and Peyton Smith. Doesn't matter who's on the floor because Willis Wilson expects him to play some defense. Where? Gets all the way to the rim. Francois, a little late on the help side, but Ware doing a nice job getting ahead of the defender. Skip to the corner. Lampkins three. That's going to be short. Elijah Schmidt couldn't come up with it. His heart, nice box out. That was a really wide open shot. Sometimes those are the hardest. Where up to Bain. Tied at 31. Hart with it beyond the arc. Stepping out. Perry Francois. They'll give it up. Walker, does he turn it over? Nope, finds his man, but blocked. And the Islanders have it. Hart blocked by, I believe, Elijah Schmidt. Quickly up the floor, J Jalen White. He tries to get rid of it. And an unfortunate uh, break for SFA as the Islanders had trouble maintaining possession of the basketball. But as SFA was working on the steal, somehow it got out of their hands and found the sideline. White, Schmidt. And Francois will check out with one on one on the clock. The Islanders will take a 30 second timeout. Lewis, La uh, Lampkin, Smith, Miles, Smith, Payton, and Jay Sean Talton Thomas remain. Interesting stuff. Hey, get ready for Islander baseball as the 2020 Clayburg Bank College Classic is back Friday, February 21st through Sunday, the 23rd. Catch all the action at Whataburger Field as the Islanders face Kansas State, the Wildcats, the Utah Utes. And the Missouri Tigers contact the Corpus Christi Hooks ticket office for information on full college classic passes as well as individual da uh, daily tickets. Call 361-561-HOOK. That 361-561-4665 or purchase online at cchooks.com. 
There's a preview of the College Classic on campus at Texas A&M Corpus Christi at Chapman Field. Your Islanders will host K-State, the Wildcats, Thursday before the Classic. That's Thursday the 20th at 6.30. For more information and times, go to GoIslanders.com. Baseball here. All sports underway. We'll be getting underway when Spaceball takes it. They're on the road this weekend. One minute to go. Islanders want to finish strong. Finish sound and solid here in the half. Where? On the skip back to Lampkins. Lob feed, Tony Lewis. Jump hook just off the rim. Great look inside. Missed the mark with the jump feed. 42 seconds remain. There's about, uh, there's a signal. Is there a foul on the floor? They're going to call it on Tony Lewis away from the basketball? Apparently that is the situation. And it'll be, two, it'll be free throws coming up for Nathan Bain. Lewis away from the ball as the ball was hovering around half court. Official blew the whistle on the baseline. So for the Islanders, foul trouble. Tony Lewis, Miles Smith, Jay Sean Talton, Thomas each with two. Rims in for Bain. 32-31, Elijah Schmidt will come on for Tony Lewis. Second effort for Bain. That one rims out. They'll give it to Miles Smith. 32-31 here at the American Bank Center in Corpus Christi, Texas. Southland Conference basketball. Miles Smith sending away. Elijah Smith was coming up for the high screen. He sends him away. 15 seconds on the shot clock. About a nine-second difference between that and the game clock. Miles now with nine. Now gets the screen. Trying to get into the lane. Does. With the left hand, will it go? Tipped out. Peyton Smith with it. He'll be blocked at the top, and possession arrow goes. To, the possession goes to Bain. They're going to say that Bain did not have it. So it is a shot clock violation. Willis Wilson suggesting that he didn't think that was a clean block. SFA with nine seconds remaining, 9.8 to be exact. Perry Francois wants to come on. They didn't get him in time. They didn't get him in time, so he'll go wait. He'll pick up the basketball, 10 seconds. It's a one-point SFA advantage. Trying to hold him at that. Where? And there's going to be an offensive foul on Bain. So the Islanders will have the last shot with four seconds remaining. It is non-shooting since it was player control. They're, putting, they're going to keep everybody on the floor as is. But they're going to need to have someone come back up because they're going to be doubling on Miles Smith on the inbound. Jay Sean making his way towards half court. Honored to try to set the play. Actually, they get it to Miles Smith with four seconds. Kick to Gervais. Three ball. Oh, just off the mark. They got a great play executed perfectly. For Kyle Keller, you can see the frustration on his face. The head coach of SFA that they were able to get such a good shot off of that inbound play. 32-31 the score. Islanders trail Stephen F. Austin here in Southland Conference action. The Islanders, the lone team to defeat SFA this season, doing it in Nacogdoches. They're trying to make it back-to-back -back and give them their only their second Southland loss of the season. Stay with us. More to come. Got our Islander halftime. We have a halftime interview coming up with Jeremy Garza of Gulf Coast Federal Credit Union. We've also got stats, HEB stats. We've got updates from the league, that and so much more. Islander basketball on the Islander Digital Network, powered by AP Texas, and on KDF 47 of Chris Six Production. Stay with us.
31. SFA with the one-point advantage. Your Islanders trying to give them their second Southland Conference loss of the season. Can they do it here? The first half, it was a kind of a dogfight. It wasn't pretty per se, but it was about who could scratch and claw and ultimately, you know, come out ahead. Who could have the fewest mistakes? Both teams were having their struggles, without a doubt. And to break it down right now, let's go ahead and get you the HEB halftime stats. First for Stephen F. Austin, leading the way with 11 points was Kevon Harris, averaging 18 points per contest, 3 of 5 from the field, 5 of 5 from the line, 6 points apiece for Gavin Kensmill, as well as Rod uh, Roddy Ware. Leading rebounder with 4 was Nathan Bain. 2 offensive, 2 defensive, 16 rebounds in the first half. Five offensive boards. Three assists to Roddy Ware. 11 turnovers for Stephen F. Austin. They're, they turn it over over 17 per game, as do the Islanders. Two apiece, three separate players, Bain, Harrison, Johnson. Uh, eight steals, three to Ware, and two blocks, one apiece, Ware and Johnson. 48% shooting, 13 to 27. 0 for 3 from the arc, and this is a good three-point shooting team. They're 6 of 7 from the free throw line, 85.7%. For the Islanders leading the way with 8 points was Jordan Hairston. 2 of 2 from the field. He's hit both of his shots from 3 and 2 of 2 from the foul line. 6 points for Tony Lewis. 3 of 4 from the floor, but missing his two free throw attempts. And 5 for J.V. Lampkins. 1 of 4 from the floor. It was from behind the arc, and he's also 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Leading rebounder with 4. Peyton Smith, 1 offensive, 3 defensive. 16 rebounds, matching Stephen F. Austin. Uh, six offensive boards, one more than their opponent. Three assists to, Ma to Miles Smith. 14 turnovers for the Islanders, though. Jordan Harrison, Miles Ma Smith, each with three. Three steals, one apiece, three separate players, and the one block credited to Elijah Schmidt. 41% shooting for the Islanders, 10 of 24. Three of 10 from the arc, 30%. And from the free throw line, 8 of 11. Solid free throw shooting, 72%, but that number still can get better in a tight game such as this. Again, our HEB halftime stats. HEB now with curbside and delivery service. Check HEB.com for more information. We'll take a break, come back, and be joined by our good friend Jeremy Garza from Gulf Coast Federal Credit Union. That's here at the half. The score, 32-31. Stephen F. Austin leads your Islanders. Stay with us here on KDF 47. This Chris Six production.
Welcome back to Onander Basketball. The score here at the half, 32-31. Coming to you on the Onander Digital Network powered by AP Texas and, of course, on KDF 47. I'm joined right now by Jeremy Garza of Gold Coast Federal Credit Union. Our game sponsor tonight, Jeremy, you guys have been with us for a number of years, and we sincerely appreciate it. And this is, this is a game that you want to be at tonight, and I'm glad you guys could be here for it. This is an exciting game. I can't believe how physical both teams are playing right now. And I know that you come from a Southland Conference school, so you've seen these teams for a number of years. And, you know, we're giving it everything we can. It, it's, again, who can uh, be the last one standing when this one is over? You know, it seems like, you know, after the first encounter, they, there's some, something that wants to be said here. Someone really wants to show who they, who's really tough in this conference. Without a doubt. Now, again, you guys have been with us a long time. And tell me a little bit why, again, being involved – in the community is so vitally important for Gulf Coast Federal Credit Union. Well, you know, Gulf Coast has been in the community and raised here for eight. This is our 80th year, actually. 80th year. 80th year in business, and we've done that uh, entirely in this community, you know, from beginning to end. And we're very proud of everybody in this. And, you know, even if you're a new student coming into this to the Islanders, we welcome you, and we're happy to have you in our community. Well, again, you all have expansive services and stuff. Of course, there's a credit union, but I know you've gotten in the insurance game too. Yes, we actually have. Uh, you know, Gulf Coast is out there. What, what we try and do is anyone is starting off and needing an account, we like to open our doors to anyone, especially starting off, because, you know, that's when you really need the most help is when you're young and you don't know what to do. And if you ever need advice or insurance, we're there for everyone. What is your best advice to a college student that's really just getting starting in this world, you know, putting money away, establishing credit? You know, one of the biggest things we get always is, is how do we do it? How do we, uh, is it to get a credit card? Is it to get a car? And we always say one thing, whatever you do, credit card or auto loan or anything, make sure you do something that's well within your budget. Stay within the budget of anything you try and do. I really wish you were around a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, I really, really you know, wish. Because well, that is sound advice. Yeah, what we try and do is we have these starter credit cards, you know, that's $500 limit, maybe even $1,000. And all you're trying to do is just make sure you can make that monthly payment and establish yourself. That way when you get out of college, You've already you got your degree, you've got some credit now, and you're ready to make your move into the, into the world. Any expectations? What, what's your predictions for the second half here? You know, I, this is what I think. I think the, the Islanders right now are saying, you know what, if we clean this up a little bit, if we just keep some of the turnovers, they're going to pull this out, no doubt. That's that, what that, was, that was coach speak right there. That was, that was pretty good. <laughs> I will have to say, I'm pretty impressed. Hey, maybe they got me. But room maybe me maybe, the room. They maybe they'll yeah. take care of a little bit of that there. Again, Jeremy Garza of Gulf Coast Federal Credit Union joining us. Tonight's game sponsor here at the American Bank Center. We sincerely appreciate their continued support of the Islanders. Jeremy, thank you again. We're happy to be here. We'll take one more break. break. 32-31 the score. Uh, Islanders trail the Lumberjacks by one. Stay with us. More coming your way. Go Islanders.
Getting ready for the second half. 32-31, Islanders down one to the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks here at the American Bank Center, Corpus Christi Athletic Club Court. Uh, a lot of people have got their eyes on this one, and I'm sure that they are kind of glued in seeing how close this one is here at the half, 32-31. But a couple of other scores from around the Southland getting you updated. Northwestern State leads Incarnate Word, 55-49. That's with four and a half to go in that contest. With 16-31 to go in the second half, 42-39 Lamar over Nichols. That's in Louisiana. Uh, Southeastern Louisiana hosting Sam Houston State. Sam Houston State by six at the half, 39-33. New Orleans by eight at the half, 39-31 over Central Arkansas. And finally, just getting underway, Abilene Christian leads Houston Baptist 14-4. That's with about 14 minutes to go in that half. And a quick update as well from uh, Islander women's basketball. With 7.43 remaining in that contest, Stephen F. Austin holds on to a 13-point advantage, 53-40. to 40. Those are the scores from the Southland Conference. We're getting ready to see what the score looks like right here. 32-31, action's getting underway. Brain in Corpus Christi. It'll be Hairston, Miles Smith, Jason Talton Thomas, Tony Lewis and Peyton Smith back on. Bain, Ware, Harris, Kensmill. And I believe Johnson. Bain. Kenza back out. Ware challenged. Three ball won't go. Long board. Kinsmill gets it to Ware. Quick swing to Harris. Harris defended by Miles Smith. In deep to Kinsmill. No double. Tony Lewis is going to take him on one-on-one. -on -one. He got that nice step through to get separation from Tony Lewis. It's a three-point SFA lead. The offensive rebound extended the possession. And there's going to be a foul. Chasing the play was Cameron Johnson. Something I'm seeing on Jordan Hairston here in the second half. He's got a bandage across the bridge of his nose. Something must have taken place in the first half that we did not pick up on until now. Jay Sean Talton Thomas will take the inbound feed. Hand off to Peyton Smith. Harris does a nice job recovering, kind of stopping the flow of the Islanders. Miles Smith now with it with 10 seconds to go. Ware, a solid defender. He's been making life difficult. Peyton Smith, catch and shoot three. It won't go. Tony Lewis, tip. Who's got it? Oh, it's going to be SFA on the baseline. Trying to keep it alive, Tony Lewis. That was a great look. Ware loses his balance. Hairston with it. He'll pull the trigger, short jumper. Jay Sean there. He'll get the finish. Jay Sean Talton Thomas on the inside. Hairston, it just fell short, but perfectly short into the hands of Jay Sean Talton Thomas. Back, back down to one. 34 33. Where? And there's going to be a foul on Hairston. Kind of trailing the play. Said he's got him with the forearm. For Hairston, that's number two. So four Islanders on the floor with two apiece. First foul of the second half against the Islanders. 34 33. SFA by the single digit. Every possession. Beautiful effort, but another offensive rebound. Jay Sean altering the shot. It comes down, but right back into the hands of SFA once again. There'll be a stoppage, and I think there's an injury. Johnson's going to check out. I don't know if he's cramping or an injury, but Cackleries will come on for Cameron Johnson. Johnson, the junior transfer. Played at Tyler Junior College. And of Corpus Christi did enough, a, a good enough job defensively, but the offensive rebounds, the big difference. Miles Smith to the free throw line. Stops. Can't do much with it. Taken away as he tried to feed Tony Lewis. But the turnover to Miles. Where? Loose ball out of bounds off of Jay Sean Talton Thomas as he swept it out of bounds. Saw a similar start in the first half where both teams were just kind of struggling with possessions. But for Andy Corpus Christi, they got to get a handle on this now. Cackle Reese. Where's the five-second count? They didn't get it. It's going to be out of bounds off of Miles Smith as Harris tried to bring the basketball through. 18-01. That was a very long four-and-a-half count, I'll just tell you that. Cackleries will take the inbound feed this time. Back to Harris. Harris using the screen. Quick skip. Cackleries. 
Three ball, it's good, low liner. Nothing but the bottom, 39-33. Iggy Hunt will come on momentarily. Miles Smith, once again, where has been very difficult for Miles tonight. Solid defensive effort. Jay Sean catch and shoot three. That's going to be off the mark. And a rebound, Harris quickly cackles. Takes the outlet. Watch turn the corner. Kinsmill with those hands up. Cackles again for his second three. This will not go. Rebound secured by Tony Lewis. Kinsmill down. Islanders have got numbers. They've got numbers. Oh, Tony Lewis was open, but they find Miles Smith. It counts. So they missed Tony inside, but it worked out as they found Miles Smith for the triple. Where? Looks inside for Kinsmill. No help. Bain trying to. And there's going to be a foul on Tony Lewis. He definitely got the knee into the play when Kinsmill spun baseline. For Tony, number three, second team foul against the Islanders here in the half. Iggy Hunt's going to come on for Tony Lewis. Iggy Hunt. Cacklerees will inbound. Looking for Bain over the top. Seeing if they're trying to ISO Kinsmills. No, it's going to be a handoff for Harris. Harris, step back three. It's good. Peyton Smith got caught on the screen. Harris took that little step back to create even that much more space. He knocks it down, answering the Islanders three from a moment ago. 42-36, back to the six-point advantage. Iggy Hunt. Tried to go on the screen and roll. It was deflected as Iggy was making the turn. Where? Drop feed. Harris can't get it to go. Harris chases. And a foul on Iggy Hunt as he reached with the right arm and got a piece of him. So Brain and Corpus Christi, tough start to the second half as they trail by six. 42-36, being outscored by five thus far. And it'll be free throws coming up for Kevon Harris. Islanders are going to take the timeout. We will as well. Islander basketball on the Islander Digital Network powered by AEP Texas and on KDF 47, this Chris Six production. Stay with us, more coming your way. Forty-two thirty-six. the score, SFA outscoring your Islanders 10-5 here in the second half thus far. Willis Wilson deciding to take the timeout instead of waiting for the media break. He wanted to get this team's attention, and I believe he's done just that in the huddle. Islanders shooting 40% in the second half, 2 of 5, 4 of 7, SFA 57%. SFA in the first half, 0 for 3 from the arc. They've hit 2 of 4 here in the second. That being a big difference in this uh, second half stretch thus far. Islanders with 16 turnovers on the night. SFA with 12 of their own, but the 20 points off of turnovers, SFA's been able to capitalize on. Islanders only with 12. Peyton Smith, Jordan Harrison, Iggy Hunt, Jay Sean Talton, Thomas Miles Smith coming back on. Roddy Ware, David Cacklerees, Kevon Harris, Gavin Kensmills, and Nathan Bain returning for SFA. It will be Harris at the line shooting too, trying to build the advantage to eight. Harris kind of has that low line drive free throw, but effective for him. Seventy-four percent on the year, seventy-three percent in conference. So very comparable. Misses the second, though. 
Miles Smith gives it up to Jayshon. Quick swing, Jer Jordan Hairston. Three ball. Tipped up. Iggy Hunt can't find it. And he's, his shoulder's a little, he's holding his shoulder. Hopefully it's not too much of a problem. Ken's Mills found a great position on the low box. Got there. When the big man runs the floor, you get him the basketball. And that's exactly what SFA did. 45-36. A couple shots not falling for any Corpus Christi here in this second half. Jay Sean Talton Thomas goes up against Bain. Kick back to Peyton Smith. Cross court. SFA, nice job on the D. But that's what they're known for. Back and forth, Miles Smith. Blocked at the top again. He's got to get the defender off the ground. First and foremost, Bain. Trying to turn the corner, can't do it, but Bain is there for the follow. Again, offensive rebounds. SFA off to a strong start here in this second half, now leading 47-36, outscoring the Islanders by 10 here in the half thus far. Nice job, Iggy Hunt, on the offensive follow. Jay Sean splitting the defense. But for of Corpus Christi, oh, a nice effort by Jordan Hairston as he kicked the interior pass to the, and that was looking, they were looking inside, I believe, for Kensmill once again. It's a nine point contest, and another timeout on the floor, 15.06 remaining. Islanders 40, excuse me, Islanders trail 47 38 to SFA. More to come on KDF 47 and on the Islander Digital Network, powered by AP Texas. Well, to start the second half, AM Corpus Christi, only three of nine, six of ten, Stephen F. Austin. Thus, being outscored by eight, 15 to seven. Uh, this is a scenario for Texas AM Corpus Christi where they can't let this one uh, start getting away from them. This is the ideal opportunity to start whittling back into that margin. In the paint, that's where Stephen F. Austin has done the damage, a 32 to 18 point differential. In the first contest, the Islanders had a nice run, especially on the inside with their bigs. But tonight, SFA much more prepared. Their defense has been solid. Block shots on jump shooters. Rati Ware has been very good tonight. Ware on the bench. No, Ware, excuse me, he's on the deep corners. Cackleries with it. Kensmill. He wants it in the post. Harris not getting it to him yet. On the screen, Harris, and there's going to be a foul on Miles Smith as he got the arm up and got under, kind of underhooked the right arm of Harris. That's going to be his third, team fourth. Only one foul against SFA thus far here in the second half. Be smart, you got help behind you. Cackarees finding Harris. Kensmill on that screen and roll once again. They're trying to get it through. Harris, drop feed. And Iggy Hunt's going to be called for the personal. Miles is on the floor. Calvin Solomon picked up the call. I think in that situation, Miles might have, just, might have been stepped on when he went to the deck. 14-43 remaining, 47-38. It is Solomon at the free throw line. Solomon, freshman from Klein Forest High School in Houston, Texas. A sub-50% free throw shooter. Let's see what he does here. Shooting two. Fifth team foul now against the Islanders. Yeah. 
This one's off the back of the iron. Kind of has that, like, like throwing a dart. SFA up nine, trying to make a 10. That'll be off the mark. Rebound, Jayshon Talton Thomas. We've identified someone to foul if need be down the stretch. Iggy Hunt wanting the basketball, not there. We'll skip it back up to Hairston. Floater in the lane is good. Over Jordan. Give me over Solomon Kensmill. He's going to be fouled as he gave ground, brought the hands down, did not go vertical, kind of advanced towards him. It's going to be in Francois for the Islanders. 47-40, Kinsmill at the line. Got to be sound and solid defensively if we're going to whittle into this lead. Francois, final instructions from Willis Wilson before he goes on. Kinsmill is shooting two. David Kinsmill makes the first. For Kinsmill, first free throw of the night. Is that correct? That is correct. Makes his first. Second effort. Also good. Back up to nine, 49-40. Miles Smith. Right up against Ware. Ware has been an effective defender tonight. As has Stephen F. in general. Francois. Trying to will his way through. He'll be. Oh, they said he traveled. That is not a walk. That is not a walk. He never moved that pivot foot. Willis Wilson. Wilson. I'm sure when you blew the whistle and you ask him. Willis Wilson is, is definitely letting him. Did not agree with the call. As he was trying to get himself established before he was able to get the jump up, they said he moved the pivot foot. On their bench disagrees. Cackle Rees. Kensmill brings it down. Loses the handle. Tipped. Cackle Rees with it. He's out of bounds. So the Islanders get it back. So a couple good deflections by the Islanders in that defensive series. Willis Wilson's continuing the conversation regarding the alleged travel against, against uh, Perry Francois in the previous possession. Francois, solid screen, cross court to Smith. Jay Sean Talton Thomas up faking. He loses the handle. It's loose, but into the hands of Jordan Hairston. He'll give it up to Miles Smith. Miles Smith for three. It counts. Take it, take it any way you can get it if you're an Islander fan right now. 49-43. Ken's Mills goes down hard. A couple people slow, including Perry Francois, Ken's Mill, and on the far side, also, I believe, number 13, Calvin Solomon. Eats coming up. A little bit slow. They're going to have to do a, put a lot of attention on the floor with the sweepers. Nathan Bain's going to come back on. Again, that was not how you draw it up, but effective as the three falls for Miles Smith. Bain will now inbound. They'll get the substitution. Solomon checking out. Hairston. And there's going to be a reach in. Case Walker will inbound. Walker will come on for Cacleries. So it is a six-point contest with the Islanders able to chop it to four, possibly three in this possession with 13:05 remaining. Our sweepers are getting a workout tonight. Call up, call up, call up. 
Miles Smith. On the crossover, trying to free up Harrison. Harrison defended, and there's going to be a foul, um, I think, on Bain. It is going to be Nathan Bain away from the basketball. I think maybe on the hold of Jay Sean Talton Thomas. That's going to be the third on Bain, the second foul. Peyton Smith on the inbound, looking for Miles Smith. They get it across to Jordan Harrison. Harrison. Looking for the open player. Miles Smith coming all the way back. Down to 10. Miles using the screen from Francois. Back to Harrison. Harrison behind the back. Floater. It's good. Down to four. 49 45. In deep. Ken's Mills. Off shot. Loose ball. Who's it on? They're going to call it on Miles Smith on the box out. For Miles, if that's the case, that's number four. That's four on Miles Smith. Perry Francois altered the shot of Ken's Mills, but again, SFA strong to the offensive glass. Harris. Harris losing his balance, drawing the attention to Miles Smith. And he'll check out with 12 22 remaining. So from this point forward, watch for a lot of that offensive defensive switching. Lampkins, definitely an offensive performer. Jordan Harrison, Peyton Smith, more than likely managing some more of the, the ball handling responsibilities. Harris misses the mark. Jay Sean with the rebound. So a crucial miss, potentially for Stephen F. Austin. Peyton Smith, he'll run the show. Smith, looking for, looking for the step out. They'll finally get it to Jay Sean. Into the lane. Spinning baseline, nothing there. Bain did a nice job, looping it back for Hairston. Somehow does not go over the timeline. Hairston stripped on the way up. Got him down low, Harris. Dribble, where? Fouled hard by Peyton Smith, and that's... They're going to call him for the travel. The official from the far side said the travel came first. You heard it from the Islander bench. I was watching the defender, did not see the offensive player. They said clearly there was a travel, and the official trailing the play also agreed. They're at 49-45, Islanders trail by four to Stephen F. Austin. 11-51 remaining here at the American Bank Center. Corpus Christi Athletic Club Court. Islander basketball on the Islander Digital Network, powered by AP Texas, and on KDF 47. Stay with us.
Willis Wilson calls for the play, and SFA duplicates. The Islanders, well scouted here. Let's see what they can advance. Jave Lampkins can't get the shot off. Coming back to the basketball, and they're going to say it's going to be a foul on number three, Cameron Johnson, while Jave was trying to pivot and try to find a passing angle. Johnson in too tight, and that is now going to put the Islanders in the bonus. Peyton Smith looking to come back on. From the free throw line, if Juve can knock down two, it'll be back to a one-point margin. Miles Smith back out as the Islanders will go to the defensive side of the floor in just a moment. Juve Lampkins off the mark on the first. Cackleries with the basketball. Missed opportunity for AM Corpus Christi. Cackleries to the high feed. Kinsmill kicks it back out. Cackleries can't get the shot off as Harrison closes. Off the dribble. Where? And it's going to be a three point opportunity. Where? Looked like the Islanders went vertical. Where was the initiator? But they're going to call it on Francois. He didn't lead. He kind of led with his hip and his side. So prepare Francois. It's been. Tough couple moments.
53-47, Islanders trail by six, but we'll have the basketball as play gets underway. I was telling you about some of the other Islanders events going on, uh, what's been exciting with other teams. Islander golf got underway this week, finished as a team in a tie for seventh place. Bynum finished in a tie for See, Sample snacks it with a tie. Good for her. University of Texas turn. Match up, but unfortunately could Coach Kristen. And Islander baseball will open up. All games are afternoon of on Sunday. Um, powering. Spun into the lane, got away from his man. Jay Sean Talton Thomas to the block from behind on Kinsman. Kinsman late getting back down to Jay Sean on the defensive end, then the offensive end makes it a four point contest. Big play, can, will that spark this Islander team? Johnson looking to the corner to where, and there's going to be a, a double foul. It's going to be Jay Sean Talton Thomas picking up one, as well as number 12, Charles Daniel, SFA. For Jay Sean, his third. For Daniel, his fourth. Bain's going to come on, I believe, for, I think, Cameron Johnson. And Miles Smith on the defensive side will check out as Jave Lampkins returns. 53-49. Tackle reads, a little trouble. Loops it up over for Bain. Time for a big defensive stop for Adam Corpus Christi. Kensmill finds Bain on the wing. Jordan Hairston will check out. It'll be Ken's Mill at the foul line. Hits it. Three point play. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. 56 49. Up to seven now. Islanders had cut it to four. Jay Sean will. Between the legs, dribble, knocks down the jumper in the face of Gavin Kensmill. Down to five, 56 51. Kensmill continue to watch where, he's, where he ends up rolling. Drop off. This time it won't go. Tip up, won't fall. Islanders prevail this time. Kensmill had an opportunity. And a timeout, Kyle Keller, as he is. I think he had contact with the official on the sideline, not intentionally, but I think he was beyond the coach's backer on the floor. He ran into the official, and the official went to the floor and has called the technical against Kyle Keller. That's the only thing I can take away from that, as I believe that was the case. Well, I tell you, for Coach Keller, I'm not. I, I, was he on the floor? I'm not sure. Was, where was the position of the official? The official saying clearly that he was interfered with, and so saying that Coach Keller was either on the floor or out of the box at the time. So, turn my head back to the right to see what the case was, and by the time that happened, kind of clueless. Back to a three-point game, though. Islanders knocked down two free throws after the scenario. And we'll have the basketball. So back to a one possession game with 6-12 remaining. Miles Smith staying on the floor. Jay Sean Talton Thomas checking out. Iggy Hunt, his length coming back. They need him to be big. 
Elijah Schmidt will give it back to Peyton Smith. Schmidt to Smith. Sometimes I that Schmidt comes out at Smith. I want to be sure that's not the case. Peyton Smith picks up a dribble. Miles Smith coming back to the basketball. Miles trying to make something happen. Gets it to the corner. Iggy Hunt, turnaround jump shot. Will it go? No. Again, the shot clock working against the good defense from SFA. And there's going to be a foul if it's on Miles Smith. That's number five. As he tried to stop the interior feed, that is going to be the case. So he, Miles Smith with 538, caught on the defensive side of the floor after the missed shot, is going to pick up his fifth, and he has fouled out of the contest. Islanders are going to have to do it without their junior point guard. Again, it is only a three-point contest. Kinsmill was able to take advantage of the switch. He hits the first. Back to a four-point contest, 57-53. Again, getting caught, having to defend Kinsman on the low box. Second shot, good. 58-53. Peyton Smith will walk it up. Peyton Smith, of course, of course, Christie, and a legal screen on Elijah Schmidt. And I don't know if he was moving or if Peyton left, went too soon before he can set himself, but it was just an error. Uh, just a little a lack of concentration from the Islander players in that situation. 58-53, Ken's mill to inbound. Tackle Reeves will walk it up. Needing a stop, Bain on the left wing. Ken's mill up faking. Jay Sean Talton Thomas with the block, and Iggy Hunt will be called for the personal as he was chasing. Again, we're making some plays, but the balls keep landing into the hands of us SFA. We saw a lot of that in the first, first half. Nathan Bain, the recipient this time, Iggy Hunt chasing. For the personal. A little line driver off the front iron finds its way. 60-53. Peyton Smith. Defended by Harris. Needs some help.
Brandon Corpus Christi, the second half. Been a challenge. Only eight field goals in the second half, eight of 20. Stephen of Austin, not much better. They're 10 of 20. 40% for the Islanders, 50% for SFA. On the game, right at 41% for the Islanders from the floor, 49% for SFA. The numbers that really stand out, a and Corpus Christi with 22 turnovers compared to 17, which is a lot, but still five less than their, five more than their opponent, SFA. In the paint, it's been all SFA, 40-22, the points differential. Kensmills, he has made a living being on the opposite side of the lane. The distribution, the assists are just piling up now as they've been able to find him with regularity. Jay Sean Talton Thomas is going to go to the free throw line. Jalen White, Elijah Schmidt looking to check in. Harrison, Lampkins, Peyton Smith, Tony Lewis on for the Islanders. Miles Smith has fouled out. Jay Sean knocks down the first, 64-56. Tony Lewis checking out. And Schmidt comes on for him again. Some offensive defensive switching as he does have the four personals. In the first contest, I would agree. I think Aiden Corpus Christi's bigs had a very strong performance. Tonight, it's been much more challenging. Two for two. Jalen White on. Jalen White, excuse me. On for Jay Sean Talton Thomas. For the Islanders, 15 of 21 from the line. Only 66% for SFA, 16 to 24. Bain will send it to the left wing. Where? Up top. Cackle Reese. Loop feed. Nice job, Jordan Hairston, as he got over Bain, but they couldn't secure the loose ball. 14 seconds on the shot clock, 3-12 on the game clock. Where to inbound? Looping it over to Harris. Harris getting the screen. Watch for Ken's Mills as he tries to drive. Harris drop feed. This time is Bain, and he's tied up. It's Elijah Schmidt came down right on the basketball. Possession arrow belonging to the Islanders. For a minute, thought that he had gotten juked, which he did, but when he brought the hand down, it was all ball. Elijah Schmidt checking out. Tony Lewis back on. Jalen White also checking out as Jay Sean Talton Thomas returns. <laughs> Coach Willis Wilson calls stack, and then immediately SFA yelling the same. So let's see where they go. Peyton Smith running the show with. Oh, it's deflected as Hare, as they tried to lob it into Tony Lewis, did not pan out. Cacklerees, drop feed, Kinsmills. He gets it to go. He has just been the recipient. I would say. 80% of his shots have all come off of the assist. Lampkins through the lane, off the rim. 66-57, 225 remaining. Brain and Corpus Christi, they can't not get desperate. They got to stay with the play. In deep to Bain. Bain skip up to where? Kensmill's wanting it. Not yet. They'll look for the high, look for the high feed. Kensmill's looking for the cutter. It's Bain. Bain. Backing in, Peyton Smith able to drop it in over the front iron. Nathan Bain, six foot six, 210 pound senior. Back to Jay Sean. They'll give it to Peyton Smith. Try to sneak it through, loose ball, who's got it? Kevon Harris does. Onanders trying to thread a needle in traffic, there was nothing there. 138 remaining. Clock is winding against the Islanders right now as they trail 68-57, down 11. That matches the largest lead of the game for SFA, the 11-point margin. Harris trying to hook with the right hand, and there's going to be a foul on who? They're going to call it on Peyton Smith, the trailer on the play. 68-57 and going to the foul line. SFA and a timeout taken by... Stephen F. Austin will stay here through this break in the action. Thank you again, AEP Texas, presenting sponsor of the Islander Digital Network, AEP making connections to communities and to people. HEB, a better year starts here. Go back to school with HEB. Chris Six Communications, 
More breaking news, more team coverage, more resources. Evans Glass Service where they specialize in service. The Waves Resort, your all-in-one entertainment destination. Dave and Buster's half. Price games every Wednesday, half the price, all the fun. The Fairfield Inn and Suites. In the country and in suites, in the heart of the Corpus Christi Shopping District and Network Cabling Services, connecting the communications of tomorrow. Great sponsors that have been with us all season long uh, here on the Islander Digital Network and, of course, here on KDF 47. KDF 47 is Chris Six Sports Production. They'll be back with us again on the weekend as the Islander men and women will take to the floor against Abilene Christian. 1 o'clock and 3.30 here at the American Bank Center. Tickets are available by contacting the Islander Ticket Office at 825 Ball. 825-2255. Can't make it here. Of course, you can catch it on the digital network or, of course, on KDS 47. It is Kevon Harris at the free throw line. For Harris, it falls. One through five. Seven of nine from the line today, Kevon Harris. Should be 16 points, I believe it is. Yes, it is. Make it 17. No number 10. Long distance three point shooter coming on for the Islanders. Islanders trying to, they got to get some open looks though. SFA's defense has been pretty, pretty challenging. And there's going to be a foul on the overplay. Harris, which has fouled him out. 120 remaining. And Jalen White's going to come on for the shooter in just a moment for Stephen F. Austin. They'll bring back on number 11, uh, Otis Walker. Iggy Hunt, as well as Elijah Schmidt, they'll both come on. They're going to do, uh, I guess, bringing in some rebounders. In the likelihood, something does not go right. It does not fall. He wants two rebounders on the floor. They've got it situated. Jay Sean hits the first. Jay Sean Talton Thomas hits them both. It was interesting watching how Gavin Kensmills was trying to direct traffic on the, the guards up at the top of the lane to make sure they boxed out the free throw shooter. Kakaris. Bain wants to get it inbounds to get it to Kinsmill. And they'll throw it up the floor, and it's going to be a turnover. So Andy Corpus Christi forced the turnover. The errant toss, 115 remaining, 11 point game. Peyton Smith, Jason Talton Thomas, Nolan Bertain return. Also, Tony Lewis is going to come back on for Andy Corpus Christi. He's going to come on for Jave Lampkins. Coach Keller saying someone take control. That turnover was not one he was happy about. Peyton Smith kicked to the wing. Dolan Bertain for three. Up, and he knew what to do immediately. Knocked it down. Dolan Bertain reigns in the triple. Penetration kick out. 70-62, and they'll make the big switch again defensively with 103 remaining. Timeout on the floor. Willis Wilson after the main three to make sure that he got the substitutions he was hoping for. And again, to get some defensive strategy. Honors, as we mentioned, six and seven coming in, hovering right around the eighth, ninth position, needing to be in the top eight to advance to the Southern Conference Tournament. It's a tough part of the lineup for Texas A&M Corpus Christi as they are facing SFA today. Abilene Christian on Saturday, then they'll have the week off. They'll have. <laughs> Excuse me, no game on Wednesday night. Lamar will host the Islanders on February 22nd. Then they'll travel to New Orleans on the 26th. Incarnate Word will come to the American Bank Center on the 29th. Sam Houston State March 4th here at the American Bank Center. And then they'll wrap up at home against Houston Baptist on March 7th. There's some games to be won there that's going to be very vital because there's some tough competition, especially this week with Stephen F. Austin and Abilene Christian. Iggy Hunt, Jalen White, Jordan Harrison, Jave Lampkins, Elijah Schmidt, Bain, Kensmill, Walker, Kakarese, 
and Ware for SFA. They're going to allow him to inbound from the far side. Well, they got what they're hoping for. Bain quickly up to Ware. Ware back and forth. They'll skip it to the half court. White quickly on Walker. Got the two hands on him to draw the call with 57 seconds, the call they wanted. Talton Thomas will check out. Peyton Smith, stay, uh, uh, again, they'll come back with a four-man substitution. Eight-point game for Walker. He will shoot two. Both teams shooting two as they're in the double bonus. With all these players here at Press Row, it's amazing. I can't see anything. <laughs> but now as they clear, White, Schmidt, Hunt, and Lampkins check out. Solomon's going to come on. Come on for Cackleries. They're just bringing on some length. So Walker stepping back to the line, trying to go two for two. And it barely falls for him. That's his only two points of the, of the game thus far. Peyton Smith, strong to the hole. Timeout, Willis Wilson. As they got up quickly, Peyton Smith went straight at Kinsmills. Kinsmills a little disciplined not to potentially foul and give the Islanders the three-point chance. There's a timeout on the floor, but again, we're going to stay here through this stoppage. It is a full timeout. And I believe the final timeout for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. That is the case. Again, Islander women, a tough one tonight on the road at Stephen F. Austin. The Lady Jacks, very effective at home for the Islanders. Seems like a, a, just a, a bit of an issue in the second half, just kind of fell apart. Looking at that game one more time. Trying to get a, a better understanding. The final in that one, 72-49. Emma Young did have 12 points, two assists. Westbrook with 11 points as well for the Islanders. Seeing if we can get a little bit more of a reading here. Uh, Alexis Bryant, only four tonight for in Corpus Christi. See if we can get a little bit more update on that situation. Played 25 minutes, four points. Only one rebound. Mm. Tough night. On the inbound, he stepped on the baseline, but they didn't call it. White call for the personal. Everybody on the baseline, fans and bench, saw that when they ran the baseline, he stepped, he stepped in play. Just a, a missed call. 72-64, Ware will get the free throws. Once again, Roddy Ware at the line, and they'll get that four-man substitution. Ware hits the first. So with 47 seconds remaining, this with only one timeout left for Stephen F. Austin, we will likely kind of see the pace of play pick up just a bit. There should be more than likely still fouls along the way. Waiting for someone to miss the mark. Ware, though, solid from the line. Ware now with 11. They'll get it all the way to Jay Sean Talton Thomas. Jay Sean against Kensmill. It's an offensive foul. Jay Sean trying to go all the way to the hole. Has fouled out. 41.6% is player possession, so no fouls. They'll make the substitution. They're ready to do so. They'll bring on everyone. Cackleries will return as well for Stephen F. Austin. So Jay Sean saw the window for the moment on the driving lane.
Kensmill just held his position. The freshman has had a really solid night for SFA. 23 points. He's made big plays after big plays. Only four rebounds. Walker picks up his dribble. And loose ball. Who's got it? And that's going to be. But the ball was loose. The ball was on the ground. They're saying he called a timeout, but the ball was on the floor. No one had possession. So how does he get the timeout when there's no possession of the basketball? With the ball loose, it's, just, it's a bit of, uh, 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 well, apparently the official said when the call was made, they did have possession. So 74-64. Sandy Corpus Christi had done what they had hoped, wreaked a little havoc in the full court pressure. And that was the last time out for SFA. They'll bring him back to the floor. Assistant coach Mark Danoff for the Islanders. Probably asking a similar question to the official about a, a timeout with, if the ball is loose on the floor. It'll be inbounded in front of the Islander bench. They were going to inbound the, in the baseline. It was changed at the last moment. Kensmill will take the feed. Give it up to Walker. Here comes the D. And a foul called on. No, they said he was out of bounds. The Islanders forced the turnover. 29 seconds remaining. 10-point contest still. Is anything possible? Sure, with the three-point shot in college basketball. Lampkin stays on. We got... One, two, three, four, five, or six players on the floor. Six players are on the floor. Six players are on the floor right now, and they got to bring somebody off. Okay, now they've got it sorted out. Iggy Hunt is coming over. They find Jordan Harrison. Harrison, little fadeaway jumper. Will it go? No. Rebound, Jordan. And, and Peyton Smith with the foul on Walker. 18 seconds remain in a 10-point contest. And Corpus Christi has given it all they're worth, but we'll see from this point forward if they continue to maintain the defensive pressure with less than 20 seconds remaining. If they had made that shot, probably so. Walker hits the first, 75-64. SFA able to keep the Islanders at bay through this entire second half. Loose ball. Tony Lewis secures. They get it to Peyton Smith. Peyton kicks it back to Javay Lampkins. Up faking. Gets it to Harrison. Harrison will launch a three. That's good. Eight seconds remaining. 75-67. They'll loop it up over the top. Kensmill will give it up, and they'll wind it down. As the defense has been called off, 3-2-1. 75-67, the Islanders fall by eight tonight to the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks. Again, it was a one-point game at the half. The Islanders had a four-point lead in the first half on a couple of different occasions. But SFA able to keep the Islanders at bay, as we said in the second half. They had the early run. The Islanders whittled it down to three on a couple of different occasions in the second half, but could get no further as SFA avenges the early season loss to the Islanders in Nacogdoches. They'll move to 13 and one in league play. The Islanders fall to six and eight. The Southern Conference, it is a bear. And people can knock off anybody else on any given night, no matter the record. Coming back over real quick is head coach Willis Wilson. As he will stop by momentarily. We appreciate him doing so. Coach, one point at the half, and then they kind of got that early that early burst, and then you battled your way back to within three a couple times, but just not able to get over that hump. What was uh, the you problem? Know, it just seemed like all night long we uh, we just couldn't convert. You know, we had some really good looks that didn't go in in the first half, second half, missed a couple layups here and there, and just, you know, one of those things where we just never really got rhythm. There are a lot of fouls called in this game tonight. I think that really contributed. I think sometimes when the, when the ball doesn't go in, it affects the way you play defense and puts a little bit of uh, 
pressure on us because we, we we had some s just senseless fouls, and the ones on Jay Sean and uh, and Miles I thought early on wasn't the fouls they had late. It wasn't the fourth foul. Miles case the fifth foul it was the one like the one at the start of the half. Miles case. You just can't have those kind of fouls. I think the big play player of the game for SFA was Kenz Mills. He was able to just be a recipient of another a number of passes across the lane and, and sitting on that left box. Well, you know, he did a great job of sitting in in the post. We didn't do a very good job of, of squaring him off. I, I think he was really determined. Now, I did think he got away with just camping out in there a lot. Uh, but nonetheless, that's the way the game's played. you gotta you got to make the adjustment, and we didn't make the adjustment very well. We'll see you on Saturday, Coach. Okay.